Hello, scholars. I'm going to do uh, chapters, chapter nine first here of Rump. Gold found, treasure lost. Ra Rations day came again at last. I went outside eager to get an early start and was showered with sparkling white. Winter had arrived. At first I was happy because a fresh blanket of snow made the world look peaceful and new. Nothing bad could happen in such fluffy white. But then the cold bit my skin and I remembered that what winter really meant. It meant that soon the pass up the mountain would be closed. No one would be able to get through to trade gold for food. It meant slow, grueling work in a frozen mine. It meant cold and hunger, more hunger than usual. Milk gave only droppings of milk. Our one remaining hen had no eggs and nothing bellowed at me because his hooves were frozen to the ground. When I finally pawed him loose with icy fingers, he kicked me from behind and I landed face first in the snow. I hate winter. When I arrived at the mines, Frederick threw a snowball at my face. Bruno got me on the back of the head. Then a tree branch dumped a load of snow down the neck of my shirt. Winter hates me. It was a long day in the mines. I kept myself from going crazy by making up rhymes. Frozen fingers, frozen toes. Where are you gold? Nobody knows. Spin a sock, spin a hat. Spin a stupid, ugly rat, a furry cat, a winged bat, spin them in a tasty stew. I like the sound of that. I went to the mill for my rations and waited in the long line with a grumbling stomach. I had found a little more gold than usual this week. I think it helped that the pixies were now sleeping for the winter. If gold meant food, then the mill miller would have to give me my rations. But when I reached the front of the line, he simply looked down at me over his bulging belly and said, no gold, no food. His eyes had a greedy gleam. He knew. I understood my dream now. I hadn't spun that much gold, but it was already choking me. When I came home, Gran was still in bed. Her eyes were open, but she stared up at the ceiling. Gran? She blinked, but didn't look at me or speak. Gran, are you all right? I walked to her and placed my hand on her cheek. I pulled away quickly. Her skin was so hot it burned my cold palm. I stumbled backward and fell, then ran outside and down the road to Red's house. I didn't know anywhere else to go. I pounded on the door, hoping someone was home. A woman swung open the door, brandishing a wooden spoon, Red's mother. She looked fierce, just like Red but she gave a start when she saw me panting and crying. Rump? She peered out from behind her mother. My grand, something's wrong, please. Red's mother threw down her spoon and grabbed her cloak. Come, she said. Red followed and we ran back to the cottage. When we walked in, Red's mother went right to Gran. Elizabeth? She gently touched Gran's forehead. Red, go outside and get a bucket of snow. I stood by the bed when, while Red's mother looked Gran over. Gran opened her eyes and made a little gurgling sound, but she didn't speak. It was like she was trying to say something, but the words were heavy and got twisted on her tongue. What's wrong with her, I asked. Red's mother didn't look at me. She's old. But what's wrong with her? Oh, child, she looked at me now with her eyes so full of pity. I thought I, I might be sick. No one can keep going on forever. She's ill. Her brain isn't working right. Her brain? I needed Gran's brain. She gave me a tragic smile. We'll just have to see. My whole body sagged and she touched my shoulder. It will be all right. Red and her mother placed cold cloths on Gran's face and rubbed warm, warm ones on her feet. They boiled water and the leftover chicken bones and spooned the broth in Gran's mouth. A lot just dripped down her cheeks and chin, but Gran seemed a little more awake while we fed her. She looked at me, or at least I thought she did, and then she fell asleep. She should sleep for the night, said Red's mother. She picked up her cloak and went to the door. I'll be back in the morning, come Red. I'll be there in a moment. 
Red's mother nodded and shut the door. Red only waited a few seconds before she did what I knew she would, boss me. I know what you're thinking, but you can't. How do you know what I'm thinking? I'm an idiot, remember? I don't think that much. Red's eyes saddened. I don't think you're an idiot, Rump. Well, you'd be the only one, including myself. I was an idiot. Why did I have to spin all that straw into gold? I should have listened to Grant, but made, maybe trading the gold for food could make her better. Rump, don't trade the gold. What makes you think I would? I glared at Red, and she backed away a little. Red, backing away from me. Things will turn all, out all right, she said. But not if you trade that gold. It's not safe. I sat by the fire, picked up bits of straw, and flung them into the flames. Just go away. Rump? Just leave me alone, I shouted. Red breathed in sharply and opened the door. A cold gust blew in and made me shiver. I take it back. You are an idiot. She slammed the door. I sat in front of the fire until it was cold ash. I didn't sleep all night. And when the village bell chimed for the mining day to begin, I didn't go. I stayed by Grand's side and fed her broth. She still didn't speak or look at me, but I got the broth in her mouth and she swallowed. She needed more food. She couldn't get well without more food. When Grand fell asleep after dark, I went to my bed and I took out three skeins of gold. I wrapped them in a dirty rag and tucked them in my jacket. Then I walked outside and headed toward the mill. Gold meant food. Opal was the one who answered the door. She stated, or she, I'm sorry, she stared at me with her blank face. I want to see the miller, I said. Her tongue stretched and wound around her mouth. What for, she asked. It was the first time I had ever heard Opal speak. She sounded annoyed. I have something for him, something he'll want to trade me. Rations day was yesterday. Father doesn't trade unless it's rations day. He'll want to trade me now, I said. Her tongue flicked out. Come back next rations day. She stared, started to close the door, but a deep voice sounded behind her. Opal, who are you talking to? Opal shrank back in the doorway, and Oswald the Miller filled up his filled filled it up with his huge girth. He was almost as wide as he was tall, his belt strained on the last notch. Oh, it's you then it is it. We've have no rations for you, and we're all tightening our belts. Be gone. I tried to speak, but my tongue felt heavy inside my mouth. I like it swelled and hardened. Like it had swelled and hardened. I figured what I, what I carried would speak louder than words anyway, so I took the bundle from my jacket and revealed the gold. Quickly, the miller stepped close, blocking the gold from Opal's view. He looked from side to side, making sure no one else was around, then lowered his big nose to my bundle. His fat face spread wide and the gold glinted in his greedy eyes. He reached for one of the skeins, but I pulled away. I thought of all the things I could demand, all the food. I would ask him to take me to the storehouse and let me choose as much as I wanted. Honey, oats, apples, onions, carrots. He would mill my grain to a fine powder, but my tongue was so heavy and the words would not come. What will you give me? I said in a strangled voice. What will you give me for this? The miller smiled as if he felt my struggle. Clever boy, he said. Opal, go and get a sack of flour and a sack of oats, 10 pounds each. I wanted to say that wasn't fair. I had three skeins of gold. That should be worth more than 20 pounds of food. I should get salt, honey, at least a little meat, but I couldn't say it. It was as if the gold were pressing down on my tongue. When Opal came back with the food, she placed it at my feet. She looked from her father to me. She stared at the bundle and my arms now covered up. Leave us, Opal, said Oswald. She licked her lips and then hurried away. I held out the gold like a dumb puppet, and the miller snatched it from my hands. Such a clever boy, said the miller, adding sugar to his oily voice. But instead of sweet, he sounded rancid. I heaved the food onto my back and took it home. 
I made a runny mush with the oats and held a spoonful to Gran's mouth. She twitched when the food touched her mouth and turned away. It's food, Gran, you have to eat. Where? Her question trailed away. Shh, just eat. I spooned the food into her mouth, willing her to get better. Gran's fever raged for the next three days. I made more of the oat mush, biscuits and bread soaked in milk, but she wouldn't eat. She was so thin, I thought she might sink right into the mattress. Soon she would be just straw. I kept talking to Gran aloud, pressing a cool cloth to her forehead and hoping that she would respond. One day faded into another as I told her stories, all the stories she had told me about witches and trolls and wolves and ogres. I talked late into the night until I had repeated every story I knew a dozen times. So tonight I told a real story, the story about me. I told it the way she had told me, how I was born with my name and my unknown destiny. And now I have a spinning wheel, I said, as I reached the end, from my mother, and I can spin gold. I can spin straw into gold, just like my mother. Did she show you her gold? Did she tell you about her magic? She gave it to me. It suddenly struck me how different things would be if my mother had lived. All that was wrong could be set right. I know my whole name and I'd understand my destiny. Gran's eyes flew open and she grabbed my arm with a surprisingly firm grip. She gurgled a little, trying to speak. My heart leapt. Gran was getting well. Gran, I asked, what is it? She gurgled some more, and then with great effort, she said my name. Wah, wah, wump, my boy. Yes, Gran, I'm here. I held her frail, gnarled hands tight in mine. Gran's eyes didn't move, but they filled with tears, which rolled down the sides of her wrinkled cheeks. You, spin. Slowly, she raised a trembling hand and placed it on my chest right over my heart. Spin gold here. She tapped on my chest. Gold here. She closed her eyes then, but gently muttered, spin, spin, spin. I tried to spoon more food into her mouth, but she wouldn't take it. She kept muttering, spin, spin, spin. Soon Gran was asleep again. In the morning, she did not wake. So that's the end of chapter nine. Uh, next will be chapter 10.